could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. You know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. But nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. We would shut down. Man, I love you. I know you're strong. Okay. So shout out to Venus. She says she ain't beat. Now let's move on to Atlanta. We got some Atlanta news. Thought I was going to get back to Atlanta. <sighs> Sigh. This is why. This is why Grace Levi is absent. I'm not about to play. I knew this when I got here. You know, as a nurse, this is some of the statistics that I learned about. I was like, damn. I know left the thugs. The gang banging and the killing. It's hard to find a good man there. Now I'm coming here to find a woman. Man. No, we're not about to do this. I'm about to just chill. So the shave room health. I didn't even know they had that section, but shout out to them. Let's see if there's a video. Let's play with the shave room. Let's say I didn't even know this was a video. Yeah, Courtney Russ, Metro Atlanta saw more than 1,500 new cases of HIV reported in 2021. That's more than twice the national average. Health officials pointed to stigmas around the virus and access to care as ongoing issues contributing to those high numbers. The CDC's most recent data on new cases of HIV paints a startling picture of an ongoing health crisis in the Southeast. We've seen that HIV is growing in the South and Atlanta. Yeah, Courtney Russ, Metro Atlanta saw more than 1,500 new cases of HIV reported in 2021. That's more than twice the national average. So, yeah, I yeah, see I've been talking about this before, you know, Atlanta on fire. Atlanta's on fire. I mean, we, we do have a lot of the LGBTQ gay community, trans community, all of that here. Um, you know what? I don't agree with um, what she said. She said that it was a social stigma against HIV and AIDS. And I think that is a lot. A couple of weeks ago, you remember me showed you that video of that young lady um, who literally was like, yeah, I'm HIV positive, I'm undetectable, and I sleep with 20-something men, and all da-da-da in these last couple of months, and the person recording it like, yeah, yeah, get it. Y'all remember that? That was Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to Atlanta. That's the mindset. So it's not a social stigma. It's a severe ignorance and a don't care. And literally, they have sex parties here. Have orgy parties here. I surprised Puffy you have a mansion around here. You know what I'm saying? We gotta have some spots around here on the low because around here they get down. Okay, so they have these type of parties where you're having people just mixing with each other. I know they ain't testing them at the door, and then they probably under all of these type of you know drugs and paraphernalia that even if they decided to strap up by the end of the night. You know what's happening, and that's real. So, guys and young ladies, please protect yourself. You know, I'm corny, I'm corny and spicy. I promote um abstinence, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If I ain't in love with you, you ain't in love with me, we ain't about to make nothing happen. You don't have plans to be with me, it ain't no reason for you to even think about it. We gotta have fun, we could probably go on a date or two, do a shoot, we do, we laugh, joke. I'm home, okay? It is what it is. If more women took that on. I think that will help correct some of the men behavior. Maybe the men that's not going to chase after the booty holes, but I'm going to move on. I ain't going to get too vulgar, but it is what it is. So I wanted to give y'all an update on Atlanta, Atlanta news. It, it is a high rate of HIV. And this is 2021. It is 2024. We're still trying to get caught up on statistics from COVID. If y'all part of Nurses to Nurses News Network, um, Nurse Lashley Page on Rumble, y'all already know when I give y'all some of those statistics, they're stopping at 2021. Like everything just stopped. So the numbers could be even more right now. Okay. So this is another story I want to bring to your attention. This could be something that they're distracting us from. This was an actual national story, story about um, Mr. Aubrey. 
Mr. Aubrey was the gentleman who was gunned down in a Georgia suburban neighborhood for taking a job for running. Okay. And these, 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 these people, let me just say myself on the screen. You see them right at the corner. These men right here were the one that were found guilty. Okay. So Mr. Ma Audrey killers argue appeal for the hate crime convictions in federal court. So this is going on now. I'm not sure if, you know, everything came to a close, but I wanted to bring it to your attention that this is going on. And this is one of the things that they could be distracting us from with this puppy thing and all this nonsense. And first at four, a federal appeals court is now set to decide whether to overturn hate crime charges against three white men convicted of killing Ahmad Arbery. So uh, Arbery went out for a jog in Glenn County in a neighborhood in 2020. A jury convicted Gregory and Travis McMichael, along with William, William Roddy Bryant, of chasing down Arbery and then murdering him. A judge sentenced each to life in prison on state charges. Then a federal jury convicted them on federal hate crime charges. Mm -hmm. 11 Live's Joe Ripley is live in downtown Atlanta for us tonight. So, Joe, today federal judges heard arguments in an attempt to appeal that conviction. That's right, Faith. Uh, I was actually live inside this courtroom here. We're live outside the uh, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, a federal court here where three judges inside heard from three defense attorneys representing the convicted men uh, in the killing of Ahmad Arbery as well as uh, arguments from the prosecution as well. So inside the courtroom, that was happening immediately after those arguments came outside and heard from Arbery's family, as well as a number of activists trying to stand for justice. Arbery's family and these activists all rallying outside the courthouse. And they said they were pleased with how today's hearing went. Panel of three judges hearing arguments centered around the federal hate crime charges. Both Greg and Travis Michael, alongside William Roddy Bryan, were all convicted of a couple of years ago. The men were previously convicted of several state level murder charges as well, which put them in prison for life. All of these charges stemming from the killing of Arbery in a Glenn County subdivision in South Georgia back in 2020. We caught up with a defense attorney for William Roddy Bryant, who told us how we got to this point of appealing the hate crime charges. We began a multi-million dollar expensive trial to the government after these individuals had already achieved, uh, had already been given life sentences. But the government, as it's right, uh, proceeded forward with a federal case. Unfortunately, we were convicted. And uh, it's only natural we want to appeal that conviction. They seen all the evidence, and they seen through those, those, those three white men that murdered my son. They seen all the evidence, and they, they just understand what they done was wrong. And you heard there from Ahmad Arbery's father, Marcus. Coming up at five, I'm going to break down the arguments we heard inside the courtroom today, as well as walk you through the next steps in this case, plus another measure of justice these activists and Arbery's family are seeking. That's all new and next at five. All right. So I'm going to actually look for that video because that was what I was saying in my head. I was like, what was the argument? What were these three... Um, convicted murders arguing that it wasn't racially profiled. See, one of the hardest things to prove in America is discrimination. And that's because you have to have evidence. And a lot of people just don't come out and say the things that's on their mind. They just passively, aggressively do stuff. You see what I'm saying? So in this particular incident, these gentlemen incriminated themselves with you know, text to each other, the things they said when they hunt him hunted him down in the street. So honestly, I don't think it's going to be overturned. I do think that um, that lawyer is milking the cow because they know that there are white conservatives, um, ones that are, <clears throat> I'm trying to be nice. You know what I'm saying? Ones that's hateful in their heart because any killing of anybody is a problem. OK, it doesn't matter. So if you support that with your money, you know what I'm going to say. You're going to hell. OK, that's going to be my new phrase. Y'all going to be like every time you go here, you're going to do something like, all right. Yep. There's going to be my phrase for a little while. OK, because that's what's going to happen to a lot of these people, literally. So I think that the um, lawyer is just trying to milk the cow. You know, keep that GoFundMe up, get a little bit more money and keep this political theater going on. You know, it is what it is. The feds picked up the case. It was a wrap. So you got to talk to the feds about that. Now. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? 
What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step by step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.